In today's video, I'm going to do a short pattern review of the beautiful yet impractical maxi skirt that I sewed for myself for New Year's Eve. I'm Sharon with Sharon Sews and welcome to my channel. I am wearing something that I sewed, this little top that I wear as a jacket. This burnout velvet knit jacket is a sewing workshop pattern. It is the cascade dress. I don't even know what year it's from. They didn't date their patterns and it is out of print. I'm gonna guess mid 90s. That's about when I was really going to a lot of sewing expos and Linda Lee and the sewing workshop had been at many of those expos. If you're familiar with this pattern, let me know if you know the date of it. Enough of that. Let's talk about this great skirt that I sewed for New Year's Eve. If you saw my November SR Harris fabric haul video, you saw this fabric. I mentioned it that I had purchased it. It just caught my eye while I was in the store. I wasn't 100% sure what I was going to do with it, but I did know that I wanted to sew something for the upcoming holiday season. I wasn't able to get it done in time for Christmas, so I made it for New Year's Eve. We did not go anywhere for New Year's Eve, but I did put it on briefly and took some photos and then took it off, put some sweats on, and we finished watching movies. The fabric I've been calling a brocade. It is, it has a raised texture on this side and it's flat on this side. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure if brocade is the right term. I went to, I went to my Sandra Betzina uh, more fabric savvy book and it could be a brocade based on what she says. I found information online that says it might be a jacquard. I honestly don't know. So I'm just going to call it a brocade. The fabric is fairly lightweight. You can see that it's got a little bit of drape to it, which is wonderful. I did know when I purchased this fabric that I wanted to sew something that did not require a lot of seams. I really wanted the fabric to be the showcase. So I chose to sew Vogue 9173, which was from 2016. It's already out of print. What is that? Five years? Because we're in 2021. Five years. It's not very practical. Do you remember when this pattern was first released? I actually purchased it when it was first released because I wanted to sew this skirt. I don't know why because I've never had a place to wear a beautiful, fancy maxi skirt. This is a very flattering skirt. I would actually use this top portion just for a pencil skirt. It is rated average and satin taffeta lace and shantung are recommended fabrics. Of course, I didn't use any of those. It's a fancy skirt, but it really was easy to sew. Here is the finished skirt, and of course I'll have photos and video of me wearing it. Now, I'm really glad that the fabric had some drape to it, but I'm also glad that it had some body to it because that helps with these, it helps with these flounces and ruffles. This is an unlined skirt. These big asymmetrical ruffles, they do need to be cut out single layer. So it takes a little bit of time to cut out your fabric. I did cut it out with a nap layout because it actually does have a little bit of a nap, a little bit of a repeat. The flower is going in a certain direction. It probably would not have been noticeable because of all of the seams and the ruffling, but I didn't know and I wanted to make sure that it was all going in one direction. The first thing I did after cutting everything out was to remove the pattern piece one by one from the fabric and then surge every edge of the fabric because it raveled so much. It would have been very difficult, I think, to sew it and then surge my seams. So I surged the seams, just taking a tiny little bit of the fabric off at the edge so they didn't affect the 5 8 inch seam allowance too much. One thing that I did not realize, because I hadn't read the back of the pattern envelope that carefully, which seems to be a pattern that I do and I really need to get into a better habit of checking for all of the notions before I dig into a project. This skirt actually is supposed to have horsehair braid on the hems. Because my fabric had this little bit of body, I was okay without it. The only horsehair braid that I had on hand was a narrow white and I would have wanted something a little bit wider and obviously in black in case that flipped up and you would have seen it on the other side. So I chose to ignore that step. Keep that in mind. If you do have this pattern or if you find it and want to sew one for yourself, it does call for horsehair braid, which would make sense if you have a softer fabric 
you want to achieve that fullness and it's kind of standing out from your body. That's what adds the drama to this skirt. Now construction, it basically is a pencil skirt. It is darted in the front and in the back. It has an invisible back zipper, a very narrow waistband. I personally like the very narrow waistbands. I did not add interfacing to this waistband, even though it does call for it. I was concerned that it would be too stiff. Instead, what I did just to give it a little bit more stiffness in there, that seam that attaches the skirt to the waistband, I just trimmed it so it would be the finished width of this waistband and then folded the waistband down to the inside and then hand tacked it in place. What that did is it gave me just a little bit more structure in the waistband without being too stiff. As I said, it's basically a pencil skirt and you can see that it is asymmetrical. Make sure you mark your pieces. Make sure you mark your pattern pieces. I had to lay things out on my cutting table and think it through just a little bit to make sure I was constructing it correctly because I had forgotten to mark it. So you sew this top part first. Then you take these asymmetrical ruffles. There is a side seam in there. You hem it. It does have a fairly wide hem and it's just top stitched in place, which that's what the instructions called for. And then you gather the top edge. I just did the old two, two rows of basting stitches and pulled the gathers to fit. There are many other ways of gathering. You gather it up to fit the bottom edge here and you baste it in place. I think you can probably see it better if I have this inside out. So right, right here, before you add those asymmetrical ruffles, add something to stabilize that bottom edge of the pencil skirt. This is just a twill tape. It's white, I know, but it's inside. You're not gonna see it. What you are doing is you're basting this first ruffle to this piece and then you're basting this piece this ruffle to this piece then you're adding another piece you'll see this is a second it's like a set the second part of the pencil skirt so you're adding that piece on top of the two ruffles that you just basted to the top portion of the skirt then you stitch it all in place there are a lot of layers here one, two, three, four. So if your fabric's too heavy, you would have difficulty here. So that's why I'm glad the fabric, although it had stiffness to it, it was lightweight enough that that worked. Your final step is really easy. It's just a bottom ruffle, just your typical ruffle on the bottom of a skirt. Fold it up and hemmed the same way as these. And that's it. You do need to add a hook and eye here. You guys, I've put it on wrong here. So I took it off and I didn't realize I hadn't restitched on until I started filming this video for you. So I do need to do that. Y'all, that's it. That's how easy this skirt was to sew. Find a dramatic piece of fabric, find a statement piece of fabric, and you have got a fabulous statement skirt. I have nowhere to wear it, but if something ever comes up, I will be set. My husband, when I put it on, was very complimentary and said, you look like you're ready to go to a ball. And he, as I said, I just felt very beautiful wearing this. It's okay sometimes to just sew something that's beautiful just for the fun of sewing it. And that's what this was for me. So I'm curious, have any of you sew in this skirt? Vogue 9173. Did you sew yourself something special for New Year's Eve? And is this a brocade or a chicard? Let me know in the comments below. That's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Would appreciate it if you would subscribe. And until next time, I hope you have a blessed day and happy sewing.